I don't know if you've noticed this, but it seems like every time I log on to Facebook these days, I get suggested these really strange AI-generated pictures. They usually depict Jesus in some strange situation, like being rescued from a plane crash in a swamp while being chased by alligators, or overlooking a pregnant woman sitting in an alleyway. Some of these photos are downright disturbing, like this one with Jesus slowly being transformed into a group of giant shrimp, or this one that I unfortunately have to censor, but let's just say our Lord and Savior is missing his lower half in this one. These pictures often have tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of likes, with hundreds of comments that just say, Amen, and nothing else. I'm not sure why these pictures keep getting recommended to me since I've never interacted with any of them, but it seems like I'm not the only one. In fact, almost every person I've asked has seen these posts in one way or another. What's going on here? Well, we're going to get to the bottom of it. That's right, this isn't just an investigation video, there's actually a logical explanation to all of this, but we're going to get to that in a little bit. For now, let's take a look at some of these pages to see what we're dealing with. The most common page I see showing up in my newsfeed making these weird posts is called Tati and Dave on 9. Going through their page reveals a lot of very similar posts. The first thing that really catches my eye is that these posts don't appear to be automated. There's no consistency as to when photos are sent out, they only seem to post a couple of images per hour, and they often take multi-hour long breaks. While this page appears to be run by human hands, that doesn't mean the content is made by humans. Everything here is very obviously AI generated, and scrolling through the photo section of this page reveals a pretty strange sense of experimentation. There definitely seems to be a theme of Jesus, public transportation, air stewardesses, predator animals, and mud. Lots and lots of mud. It also seems recently they've started to post these slightly unsettling pictures of air stewardesses with their backs turned to the camera lined up in a row praying to a giant Jesus sculpture made out of sand, like something out of a horror movie. There are also about 10 pictures here of some sort of Durga mother creature doing a bunch of chores while crying and holding up a baby who's also crying. But I guess they stopped trying with this format because these posts weren't garnering much engagement. I'm really wondering what leads to these ideas. I'm sure this page probably just tries to post more of whatever happens to get the most engagement, but why exactly are people engaging with Jesus carrying an air stewardess through a flooded street with a giant shark behind him? Other key traits to the Tati and Dave on 9 brand include bulldogs drawing pictures of Jesus, children standing next to Jesus made out of rice, Pepsi Jesus, Coke Jesus, Anime Jesus, Giant Muscular Golden Jesus, Truck Jesus, and last but not least, Thomas the Tank Engine Jesus. That's not a joke, there's a few of those posts. All these images are accompanied by the text Today's Best Photo along with a pretty random list of hashtags that include such things as Golden Dog, Bulldog, USA, Boom Challenge, and Photo Challenge Smile Challenge Today. There's not really any rhyme or reason to these hashtags, they're probably just there to farm more engagement. Which brings up an interesting question. What's the point of all this? Why go to such ridiculous lengths to farm engagement? Well, let's take a look at some of the page info to see if we can uncover some sort of ultimate goal. There's a phone number attached, but it seems to be for a martial arts gym in Florida. The page's location is set to both New York and California, and that's pretty much it. There's no website or call to action. There doesn't appear to be any sort of goal here. I tried searching the name Taddy and Dave on 9 on Google because it's not exactly a generic name, and it turns out it's taken from a YouTube channel. It's one of those boyfriend-girlfriend prank channels. Yeah, you know what kind of content this is. It literally looks like you have a diaper on. I don't think these people are affiliated with this Facebook page, but it's weird that they would take the name of such an obscure YouTube channel. I did send Taddy and Dave on an email to ask if they've heard of the Facebook page, but they never got back to me. One thing I noticed from browsing Taddy and Dave on 9 is that they have some groups attached to the page. Two out of three of them have more than 100,000 members. The third one though only has about 130 members and it reveals a pretty different previous strategy. It hasn't been active for three months, but it seems like back then, Taddy and Dave on 9 was posting mostly just scantily clad AI generated women. I guess the Jesus stuff just got more engagement so they abandoned this strategy at some point. In the God TV 9 group, which is still active with 226,000 members, you can find pretty much the same content posted here that's posted on the Taddy and Dave on 9 page. And again, these posts are doing insane numbers. But in the group, these posts are being made from a personal account by the name Ahsoka DIY, despite being the exact same posts that appear on the public facing Taddy and Dave on 9 page. 
While Soka DIY might get a lot of engagement in the God TV 9 group, they're not getting nearly as much engagement on the public posts they make outside the group, with most of their photos getting less than 30 likes. But there's quite a bit more info attached to this account than to Taddy and Dave on 9. There's a fake phone number and address here that both lead to the same Academy Sports Store in Texas. There's a short description that mentions not tying tutorials, and also a YouTube channel with the same name that contains well, not tying tutorials. At first I thought maybe this guy has a bunch of bot subscribers since his videos usually only get a couple thousand views despite him having almost 300,000 subs, but he actually has a YouTube short with 100 million views so that's probably where the subs come from. I sent Soka both a Facebook message and an email asking him what the deal is with the Jesus pictures, but unfortunately he never got back to me on Facebook and the email linked on his page didn't even exist. I did more digging and I noticed a Facebook profile attached to his YouTube channel, along with a completely different page for his not tying videos. So I sent him a message there asking if this other account posting the Jesus pictures is him or if someone stole his presence. But as you can probably guess, I never got a response back. Seems to be a running theme today. We don't have definitive proof that this is the guy behind the Taddy and Dave on 9 page, but it's the best bet we have. And by the way, I know I'm showing a personal Facebook account in this video, but keep in mind that this seems to be a purposefully public facing account, and it's even linked directly on his own YouTube channel which has a much larger presence than my own, so I'm not too worried that I'm doxing anyone. While we might have possibly found the creator of this strange AI content, we're at a bit of a dead end in terms of motive. So at this point I decided to look into some of the other pages that post similar content. Remember Shrimp Jesus? Let's take a look at the page that posted that masterpiece. This page is called Love God and God Love You, and it's mostly fairly similar content to Taddy and Dave on 9, but with a few differences. There's a definite focus on Jesus sculptures here, including Lime Jesus, Orange Jesus, Coin Jesus, San Jesus, 7-Up Jesus, more Pepsi Jesus, and even Jesus on a horse made out of Coke bottles. All of these posts are accompanied by one of two descriptions. It's either made it with my own hands, or no one likes my artwork. It's also worth mentioning that the vast majority of these Jesus sculptures seem to exist in rundown African villages, and there's usually some little boy dressed in rags who I guess is supposed to be the creator of these sculptures. Once again, everybody commenting on these posts are pretty much just saying Amen. Unfortunately, there's not really much more to this page. There are no links at all, and no indication whatsoever as to why the creator would want to garner all of this engagement. There's no call to action, no evidence of a scam, no way to make money, nothing to promote. It just doesn't make sense. I kind of feel like I'm grasping at straws at this point, so let's move on to the last page. Matthew Hackett. This one isn't actually a page, but another personal account that's making public posts. Matthew's apparently from the bustling metropolis of Florida City, and he appears to specialize in photos of pregnant women sitting in mud while Jesus watches over them. I'm not too sure what this is supposed to signify, but it doesn't really matter because thousands of people are engaging with it. All of these posts have the same caption, Today's my birthday, I just want to wish. This is followed by a bunch of celebrity hashtags. I decided to look deep into Matthew's post history to see the beginnings of his account and, oh, this is interesting, a profile picture. The comments here seem to be a mix of bots, women from Africa, and this one old American lady saying she's a hundred times worse than Bates Motel and something about Rosemary's baby? Man, I don't know what it is, but nothing at all makes sense with these pages. I did an image back search on the profile picture and it led me to this tobacco blog ran by an American guy and also an Italian author by the name of Sergio De Luca. These obviously can't be the same person and in fact, I think this might actually be an image created by this person doesn't exist.com which uses something called image breeding a primitive form of AI image generation to produce random faces. This tobacco blog in particular is really weird. It's obviously using a fake photo, but there's a lot of genuine handwritten content here, including a short but relatively detailed biography in the author whose name is supposedly John Keats. There's almost no info or references to either this blog or its author anywhere on the internet except for the fact that the government of Myanmar links to this blog. This is so weird, but I don't want to get sidetracked, so let's get back to the matter at hand. I decided to do some searches on Google. I started with the most popular and common caption I saw, today's best photo, heart heart heart. This brought me quite a few results pointing back to Facebook and they're pretty much all pictures of attractive women. Yeah, you know what these pages are doing. It's not really any different than the Jesus stuff, just for a different audience. Some of the photos are AI generated, but a lot of them seem to be real photos stolen from people's personal accounts. 
I also found this Instagram account that appears to have mirrored one of Taddy and Dave on Nine's posts verbatim, even including the same hashtags. But it was only one post, everything else on this account is also stolen content just from different sources. Sometimes with added text over pictures and videos like this one. They were stolen from meat dealers. This Instagram account links to a website where you can buy various pieces of pet merchandise. See, this is what I expect to find on one of these junk pages, a way to make money. This is what an end goal looks like. I notice on their About Us page that it only talks about a backpack company called Packwise, which was apparently started by Doug and Jimmy. I decided to send them an email asking what happened in the backpacks and if I could still purchase one and huge surprise, no response. I went back to Facebook and grabbed one of the most popular Jesus photos so I could search for other uploads of the image on Google, and it returned a flood of very similar pages posting very similar photos. All of these pages are pretty much the same story as all the others we've talked about. I started to get a little discouraged at this point. It felt like the more I researched, the less I knew. So instead of aimlessly browsing more pages, I decided to sit down and really analyze what's going on here. I started off with the audience. After all, if there's some end goal in mind for these pages, it would have something to do with the audience. Like I said earlier, it's mostly made up of people commenting the same thing. Amen. It might seem at first glance that these are bot accounts, but that actually doesn't seem to be the case. These all seem to be real accounts with real post histories. The only correlation I can find with these profiles is that they all seem to come from religious Christian countries in the global south. Places like the Philippines, Brazil, Nigeria, Kenya, Uganda. I think this makes a lot of sense. Obviously religious people are much more likely to interact with religious posts, and these countries in the global south have a lot of people who are newly online compared to here in the west. I think we sometimes take technological literacy for granted. AI content sometimes stumps the best of us, like remember that 80s McDonald's photo? If no one told me that was AI, I just never would have guessed. Now take into account that some of these people might have only started using the internet in the last 5 or 10 years, and it makes sense that they might not have the same sort of skepticism that other more experienced internet users have. Doesn't explain why they seem to like Jesus sharks and planes so much, but some things just can't be explained. Okay, so we've profiled the audience, but it still doesn't reveal any answers. Why would someone go to such an effort to garner this audience to just not do anything with it? I tried to interact with these pages, I commented, I messaged them, but no matter what, none of them ever responded to me. I even tried making a completely new Facebook account, commented on more than 20 posts from multiple pages, and still, nothing. There's been a few articles by big media outlets posted in the last couple days saying these pages exist to scam their audience after they comment or interact with the page. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get anyone to contact or respond to me. There was no scam, no products being pushed, nothing. It just didn't make any sense. But then I had a thought. Almost 10 years ago, I used to be an admin on a relatively popular Facebook meme page. Occasionally in our inbox, we would get offers from people offering to buy the page. While we never took anyone up on these offers, other pages did, and suddenly their pages would start posting garbage content, usually pushing some sort of product, affiliate link, or straight up scam. My theory is that these people are growing these Jesus pages from the ground up so they can turn around and sell them at some point. I looked up how to buy a Facebook page, and I found a website called Swap where people buy and sell social media profiles and other digital presences. After a cursory glance and talking to a couple people, I found some Jesus-focused pages, but none of them had this AI-generated content. So I decided to post an ad specifically looking for Jesus pages posting AI-generated content, and then I waited. I ended up getting a response the next morning, and look, a Jesus page posting AI content. Now granted, there's other stuff on this page as well, like quotes, and also this lovely AI Jesus video message. Wait. I don't know why people skip posts about God, but if you are not one of them, I challenge you to share this video with five people and click the link in the bio to nourish your soul with God's blessings. It's quickly become clear why people are doing this now. There's an opportunity here to make hundreds or even thousands of dollars depending on the audience you're able to grow. While looking into the past histories of some of these AI pages we were looking at, I noticed quite a few of them were just posting stolen content in 2023. But in 2024, they all switched to the AI format. And that makes a lot of sense. The AI content isn't stolen, and it's so much easier to just type a prompt than it is to look for content to steal. This whole experience still leaves me with a few things to ponder. While this whole business feels shady, is it really? 
Nothing illegal is happening. No content is being stolen anymore, and is it really immoral to sell a Facebook page? The most deception that's happening here is that some of these pages pass off the AI generations as real photos. And you can argue that whoever buys these pages might have nefarious intentions, especially since the only common denominator in the typical audience these pages have is they can't tell AI generations from real life, which might mean they're gullible to a certain degree and potentially good targets for scammers. You can definitely argue there's a level of shadiness there, but again, there's nothing illegal about selling a Facebook page with an audience you grew yourself. But what do you guys think? Did I miss anything here? Are what these people doing wrong? Let me know down in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.